Hello from the CBS 47 and Fox 30 Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris with a review of the 2019 hurricane season that is behind us. And as you can see, it was a pretty busy season, but a lot of the activity, thankfully, was out over the open water, whether it was the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, of course, one notable exception would be Dorian, which we'll have more on here in just a minute. What you really notice, though, is the lack of any activity over the central and western Caribbean. A very quiet tropical season there, and just a couple storms skirted the far eastern Caribbean. So we were in pretty good shape overall. All right, take a look at the numbers here in 2015, 11 named storms, 15 the next year in 2017, 17 in 2018, 15 and then this year, 18 named storms. So it's the most over the last five years and the most in a single year. In fact, since we had 19 named storms going all the way back to 2012. Also of note, though, and kind of interesting, eight of these only lasted two days or less. So there were some really uh, a, a number of storms that were out there for a very short period of time, likely a product of the satellite era and the fact that we can see storms now in places that we otherwise may not have ever known they actually existed. Now, how did we stack up against the forecast? I'll tell you what, it was relatively close. NOAA forecast in the left hand column and then the Colorado State forecast. And this was the original forecast going back to April and May. And then reality was this. So there were a few more name storms than were forecast. But as far as the hurricanes go and the number of major hurricanes, it really was a, a forecast that was pretty on track uh, overall, at least. And here's a look at some of the storms month by month. We started with an early season storm in May. Andrea, this is one of those very short term ones. It was on the map for just about 24 hours between Bermuda and the east coast of the US. There were certainly no land impacts. We went through the month of June without any named storms at all. That happens about every other year or so. Not all that uncommon. In July, just one. The interesting thing about Barry is that this originated from an upper level disturbance over the Tennessee Valley, dropped into the north eastern Gulf of Mexico took on some tropical characteristics, became a tropical storm. It was officially called a hurricane at landfall, though there were no hurricane sustained force winds measured over land. Did produce some heavy rain in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, as well as some isolated water spouts and tornadoes. There were no local impacts for Jacksonville, northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. Things started to pick up in August, as one would expect. Chantal was harmlessly out over the North Atlantic. Aaron did develop uh, here very near the Bahamas and moved up into extreme southeast Florida, but was a weak system, so no real big um, problems as far as any damage is concerned, and then on out into the western Atlantic. Of greatest note would be Dorian, which formed late in the month and moved west northwest bound as really a fairly disorganized storm until it got into the eastern and northeastern Caribbean, where it started to strengthen. And then, of course, we all know about the terrible destruction that occurred then uh, once it moved into the northern portions of the Bahamas. More on Dorian in a minute. September September then was the busiest month of the year, but that's climatologically what one would expect. That's on average the busiest month. So we had uh, of note Lorenzo out over the eastern Atlantic became a cat five briefly. The farthest east we've ever had a category five hurricane. We had Gabrielle, Jerry, Karen, Umberto, which briefly looked like it could affect Florida, but ended up turning out to the east far away. Imelda did pour on southeastern Texas, some very heavy rain there. Uh, and Fernand then moved into parts of Mexico. And we get into October, fewer storms more active in the north Atlantic. We did have Olga move into the western Gulf and then eventually into Louisiana as a post tropical system, but did produce tornadoes and some very heavy rainfall rainfall and Nestor moved up into the panhandle and produced some heavy rain and an isolated tornado over the panhandle. We also had some heavy rain in northeastern Florida and then on up into parts of Georgia and the Carolinas. And then finally in November, Sebastian developed harmlessly out over the central Atlantic. So let's look at the poster child, if you will, for the hurricane season 2019, and that would be Hurricane Dorian, which moved just east of Puerto Rico, but did not cause much damage in Puerto Rico. This was not near the beast that it became when it was moving through the eastern and northeastern portions of the Caribbean. So we track it day by day here, and here's August 27th with the tropical storm then just crossing the Lesser Antilles and moving into the eastern Caribbean. A pretty sharp turn to the north that becomes a hurricane very near Puerto Rico, but misses land here, which was really important because that gave it the impetus, if you will, to strengthen 
and even more over some very warm water, very favorable conditions for intensification. And by August 30th, it's a Category 3 hurricane. And it really has our attention for the Bahamas and for Florida. And here's why. It's a move just about due west and becomes a Category 5 that was crawling through the northern portions of the Bahamas. It's the strongest hurricane to ever hit the northwest Bahamas. And it's the fourth year in a row with a Category 5 hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. Remember Lorenzo, as I mentioned earlier, it was also a Cat 5. It's only the seventh time going back to 1851 that we've had more than one Cat 5 in the Atlantic Basin in the same year. Well, let's take a look at some of the video from the northern parts of the Bahamas as uh, this area was just so devastated. Still many are missing and the recovery is going to be many, many, many years. It's a generational type storm with uh, severe damage. Of course, an area that's very difficult to get uh, machinery into to first of all, get rid of the debris and then to repair it too. So you've got a lot of infrastructure uh, concerns and issues when it comes to the recovery for the Bahamas. And we've had several reporters head down here to do updates on and stories on the Bahamas and their attempts at recovery now, uh, but just a devastating hurricane. We go back to the maps then, and it was a very close call for Florida. Moving east of Jacksonville at Jacksonville's latitude, September 4th during the afternoon as a Category 2 hurricane, but a good 100 miles to the east of Jacksonville. The local impacts were relatively minor. There's some heavy rain and some gusty winds, but really not any real widespread damage. When all was said and done, the only U.S. landfall was uh, Cape Hatteras area when we had a, a brush right across the eastern coast of North Carolina. More than 70 were killed, virtually all those in the Bahamas, but hundreds are still missing. More than $8 billion in damage, and the storm was on the map for a full 18 days. So we went through a number of names here during the hurricane season. Only Tanya, Van and Wendy were left. We got all the way to the S name, Sebastian. And during the 2020 hurricane season, the first name of the season will be Arthur. And let's hope we get to go deep into 2020, the hurricane season, before we have to worry about any of these names that go through Bertha, Cristobal, Dolly, Edward, Faye, and on down the list. Of course, always updating the tropics every single day during the hurricane season. It's Talking the Tropics with Mike. You can find that at ActionNewsJax.com and also our First Alert weather app, which you can download for free. That's your summary of the 2019 hurricane season. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish.